My name is Christina Eickmeier. I'm an architect and I'm the founder of uh, Curit Architects. We are in our office now. Uh, you see the straw bell wall uh, behind us and that is one of the building techniques we specialized on. We really focus on uh, ecologic uh, building methods. I think the reason why I am so interested in circular architecture and particularly in natural building materials is really uh, lying in my roots. I'm a farmer's daughter, so I basically grew up between the hay bales and the straw bales. So around 10 years ago, we had a study trip to Central Asia, to Uzbekistan, and we had the chance to visit the rural area, which is, they have still a very uh, vivid uh, building culture with earth and timber. And what was so fascinating for us was when the son is born there, the parents buy a piece of land and then they plant trees. And the trees, they will grow, and after 20 or 25 years, when the son is old enough to have his own family, they can cut the trees, they can use the ground from the side, and with these two materials, they have basically 90% of everything they need to build the house. And this is such an ideal way of thinking for us, that, that you play in advance, you think about, okay, in 25 years, I need some timber, I just plant a tree. It's so simple, but in, on the other hand, also so surprising for our culture. And that really changed our mind, how, how we think about architecture and the way how we deal with materials. I would like to speak about our um, third straw bell project. And the first one that we did in the Netherlands, we, first we, um, have designed and built two straw bell houses uh, in Germany. And then we moved back to the Netherlands since my partner comes from the Netherlands. It's the first house we designed here with the straw bells. It's an old farmhouse. It is uh, this traditional uh, Dutch farmhouse with this very uh, big roof that almost comes down to the ground. And it has a forehouse that was used for living, and it has a, a back house, a kind of a barn, which was used for the cattle. And that was in a very bad condition, so we had to demolish that, and it was decided um, to build this more or less in the same shape, but then with the straw bale technique. I think the straw bale technique is so uh, such a good technique because environmental footprint of a straw bale is just very, very low. Actually, this CO2 footprint is even negative, so it stores more CO2 than was emitted uh, for its production. It's a, yeah, it's a super nice natural material and you can really just use it one to one from the field to the, to the building. You don't need any company to, to modify it or anything else. In our buildings, we have the farmer who brings the straw bales. We check the quality of the straw bale, and then we use it as, as a building material. Uh, what was very nice about this project, and we have done that with uh, several straw bale projects actually, is that the clients uh, did a lot of work themselves. So they invited their friends and their families, and my partner gave a workshop for them how to build it in. It's a technique which is very easy to learn. So even for people who haven't worked on a construction site at all, uh, they can learn it in a day. So that's what we did in this project. The, the clients, they just invited their friends and family and we built in the straw bales. And that gave, gives also a very uh, big social aspect to the building material, which you don't have with any conventional building uh, method, uh, you really form a community and you can really build up a relationship with the building you are going to live in. Uh, one of the major lessons was, uh, it was quite surprising actually, before we worked in Germany, so we had the experience with construction side there. When we came to the Netherlands, we just thought we do the same, but there was one thing uh, that uh, we, we couldn't find the right timber dimensions for our building in the Netherlands. In Germany, the carpenter would go to a sawing mill and just order timber 6x32. In the Netherlands, apparently, this is very difficult because all the timber uh, dimensions are industrialized and we just couldn't get that. 
So in the end, uh, the clients just bought the standard dimensions and glued two of them together. So that was the solution that we found. I think a very important quality for us as architects and urbanists in this transition is to really work together and form networks where we share honestly our experiences. What went good, what went not so good, so that you can really learn from each other. I think that is really essential for the transition we are in. Secondly, I would say we as architects should become more involved into politics and really see how we can share this movement of, of changing things.